Hi everyone, hope you are all doing well and welcome back to another New World video. So many players are going to be taking a very casual approach to New World, which is great. Everyone should be able to play the game at their own pace. But if you're anything like me, then at least part of the fun is a little bit of getting your grind on and starting to tackle the leveling process, which is what I want to be covering in this video. So sit down, grab yourself a cup of tea and let's get to it. So primarily, your core form of leveling is always going to be questing. Partially the main quest line, sort of as and when you hit the relevant level requirements because the main story quests are actually pretty heavily level gated. But mostly it's going to be coming from things like side quests. Everything else, town projects, corrupted portals, expeditions, elite zones, they are all there to really support your leveling. They can all work great and don't get me wrong, you know, you can technically fully level up using them, but in most cases the intention is that they're really there to support your quest-based levelling. So that really opens up the question of how can we speed up the process of working through with these quests? Firstly, it sounds stupid, I know, and I'm not trying to teach you to suck eggs, but it's remarkable how many people don't take every quest they come across. New World has an incredibly simple and very nicely organised journal and map system which makes it very easy to organise and navigate between the quests. So don't worry about picking up too many. Plus, some of the quests actually cut between different regions, so you're never really going to know when you might be passing one unless you actually collect them all as you meet them. Another great way of saving time is spawn dying. I've talked about this in a few videos before, but there used to be a respawn button, and this effectively acted as basically like a suicide button because when you die in New World, you'll get the option to respawn at the nearest town. And this is quite often where the quest handing actually is, and could end up being kilometres away from where you actually died, and actually where you were completing the quest items. Thus it can save you not only a lot of time, but a big chunk of walking. But as I said, that respawn button has now been removed from the game. But actually, in reality, the core mechanics remain the same. That button only acted as a suicide button. So if you die to mobs, drown yourself in a shallow river, it all has the same effect and you can still respawn to that town. Bear in mind, this will cause you a small amount of equipment damage on both items equipped to you and stuff in your inventory. But in the early stages of the game, you'll be changing equipment so regularly that it really doesn't matter much. If you're not keen on the respawn dying though, then it can be well worth making the most of the respawn shrines that are dotted around the map. You will have to discover them first before you can use them, except for the uh, one you get unlocked next to Jonas, and you do need to keep an eye on how much Azoth you are spending, because you do have a finite amount, and if you go a bit crazy on the fast travelling, you'll soon find yourself running out. And finally, if you are struggling to locate them, then you can always make use of New World Map, the website that I seem to recommend almost on every video now, which makes finding them so much easier because you can actually get their exact locations in the world. And finally, on the topic of questing, running these quests as a group is a super effective way of cutting down not only the time it takes to complete these quests, but also the difficulty. Plus, it, it can actually just be quite a lot more fun. Whilst in a group, so long as you are combat flagged, and by that I mean you know, if you fire an arrow at an undead or you hit a withered with an axe, then you're combat flagged, then when a group mate kills say one of the 12 withered you need to defeat for your quest, it will count for you too. You can also split up to search for chests if that's part of your quest or find items or join up to defeat more challenging bosses. There is certainly an increased efficiency to group leveling. But whilst you're running around New World completing all these side quests and main quests, you can also be thinking about town projects and faction quests. To take faction quests first, once you've picked your faction, which you should be doing around level 9 or 10, you'll have the option to take 3 PvE and 3 PvP faction quests. I'll leave out the PvP stuff for now because not everyone is going to want to flag and that's really a topic for a separate video. But for the PvE quests, the key is to look at their location. Sometimes they might actually be close to, 
all in the same place as your next side quest. Hell, sometimes they even have the same objectives. I once had to go to a place for a side quest to kill 12 ancients and collect two chests. I then got a faction quest to also kill 12 ancients in the same location. So really, I've only got to kill 12 once and I'm completing two quests. If that's the case, then it would be absolute madness to not be taking these faction quests. Not only are they a good source of XP, but you'll also be earning faction currency to spend in the faction store. A great way to increase the speed of your levelling, so be sure to check out the faction missions before you leave town. Town projects. These have had a real roller coaster of a journey over the past few months, which has essentially resulted in them seeing some pretty heavy nerfs, as some players were really finding ways to abuse them and basically level up too quickly. However, they are still a great tool to help with your levelling, but there are a few trap projects that you're probably going to want to avoid. As a very quick rundown, I'd happily take tasks such as hunting wolves, hunting turkeys, but I'd be avoiding things like sheep, elk and bison. Not because they can't be found, but it just isn't worth your time going out of your way to find them, and you're not really going to come across them very often in just the open world. If you're anything like me though, I always mine iron ore nodes when I pass them, so I always accept weaponsmithing, armorsmithing quests, as iron ore is always going to be the primary ingredient. I'll use a little bit of rawhide and stuff like that. And this is giving you actually really pretty decent chunk of XP, as well as actually a really good amount of crafting XP. Then we go on to things like the basic cooking town projects, things like travel rations, light rations, energizing light rations, all really easy stuff to get done. You know, there's honey and cows for milk. <laughs> in pretty pretty much every town. I don't know why I needed to explain that. I'm sure you could have worked to get milk from a cow. But so it's really easy to get the ingredients for these sort of tasks. Really easy to do. I tend to avoid the larger cooking hamper tasks though, because they often require specific herbs, garlic, etc, which is a little bit harder to find. Anything fishing related should really be avoided. It's super expensive on the market and really not worth the time in the early game, unless, you know, you're specifically wanting to play as a fisherman. If you're just looking to progress, fishing is not worthwhile early on. I also avoid most of the travel quests, unless, again, cutting like back to the faction quests, unless it's in a location I'm already travelling to. Now, I know that's a lot of information to just sort of dump on you, but to try and consolidate that as to sort of a, a general rule, I would say if it's something that you can complete without having to go out of your way or deviating from your normal questing then do it anything that requires you to go out of your way to different locations for a quest for resources items or animals it is not worth it you'll be better off just doing main and side quests this then leads us on to expeditions the first expedition that you'll encounter is amrine excavation it's a recommended level 25 but in reality, you can sort of look to, look to tackle it a little bit in the early 20s. As long as you have a sort of half-decent group with you and a healer. I mean, seriously, get a healer in the group. It makes such a difference. For your first run-through, you should have not only the main storyline quest, but a fair few side quests as well to go with it, which should mean you get a little bit of a bumper XP haul. But beyond that, you'll find that all expeditions should have a repeatable quest that can be accepted. In Amrine's case, this is from Barkamedes, just outside the dungeon. You can technically, though, do that quest sort of one and two thirds times per run, as there are actually five aberrations in the dungeon to collect bones from, and you actually only need three bones for the quest. So you could technically leave the expedition, hand in the quest to Barkamedes, immediately re-accept the quest and then rejoin the expedition where you were, so long as one of your group remains in the expedition. You know, but while these expeditions remain an important part of the main and side quests, they actually don't really stack up as a particularly effective way of levelling long term, at least in their current setup and XP reward, as there are more efficient ways of levelling. So what about corrupted portals? These will be kind of located around a turnum and consist of one central large portal or monolith surrounded by four or five smaller portals. You won't be encountering these really in the first few days in game as they actually take a little bit of time to spawn. 
but once they start, they will start randomly springing up and start spawning corrupted. I always think of them as kind of oblivion gates if you want a Elder Scrolls analogy. These portals then can then be closed with an Azos staff. You can see my corrupted portals guide for more specifics on how to close each type and Azos staff levels etc if you want to kind of get more of a deep dive into them. But effectively you can start doing these once you sort of reach the mid level and they can be a very effective source of leveling. But for them to be effective you will need to be running them as a group. It's not that you can't run them solo, at least the smaller ones, but it just isn't efficient. The XP reward just isn't worth it. You can maybe tag along with some randoms, since corrupted portals are not instanced. So as long as you actually land a few hits on the enemies, it will count your contribution. You don't need to be actually a member of the other, other groups, group, as it were. So you can just sort of tag along as a solo player. It's actually though not so much the XP gain from the portals or from closing the portals that makes this an effective levelling method, but it's the XP gain from the territory standing that you'll be gaining from closing the portals that makes it nice. On top of this though, you do get a good chunk of equipment and you actually get a nice little bit of Azoth which is always well worth having. And finally that leads us on to Elite Zones. These got some huge buffs in the last open beta with up to 60% health boost for Elite Monsters which is pretty crazy. These can still be effective to run as a group though, and they do give reasonable player experience, but it's not really anything special. And generally, if you're doing it just for character leveling, you'd probably be better off running the quests. However, where elite zones come into their own is really for weapon mastery leveling. It is really one of the most effective ways of leveling up your weapon mastery. It can be hugely useful, particularly in the early game to sort of unlock some of the extra skills and passives early on. Super useful for wars and PvP. On top of that, you can really be expecting to find a good number of chests, which are not only going to be giving you good crafting resources, but also some pretty decent equipment drops. So yeah, these elite zones can well be worth it. They do definitely need to be run as a group as really a minimum. You can also run into larger groups, you can put a few groups together, maybe go as a 10 or a 15 or something if you wanted to, and you can then really start to smash through them up very, very quickly. And so that really covers most of the core leveling methods currently available in New World. Hopefully this has given you a little bit of an insight of what you might want to do to be leveling your character. Main quests, side quests are really the way to go, but there's a lot of interesting stuff to do on the side, which is going to gain you a few levels, help you out with the leveling, plus just provide some fun additional content. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you do have any questions about any of this, post it in the comments down below and I'll get back to you. And uh, do be sure to subscribe because we've got a lot more New World content on the way. Thanks for watching guys, see you all on the next one.